Hello and welcome to another episode of the Middle Earth Play-By-Mail fan channel. Lovely to have you with us. And today I'm wanting to have a look at camping. Now I'm not talking about pitching a tent in the great outdoors and enjoying the wonders of nature. I mean going out and physically placing camps on the map as part of your economic and strategic development. Now camps, well, in some ways they're useful, in some ways they're not. On the downside, as settlements, they have no tax base. They will not increase your income directly through taxation. Also, you can only recruit 100 troops per turn from them. So as a recruiting strategy, they're really an afterthought. But do not overlook camps. They are very important. First of all, they have very good production. As settlements increase in size from a camp, so the amount of production they have across all goods except for gold will decrease somewhat. So if you're wanting to have lots of goods to sell or to use to embellish your armies or other population centers, having some well-placed camps in the right areas is really important. But also camps can of course be upgraded. So if you want to have villages and towns and starting to really build up your empire, camps are the place where you will start. Now camps can be created by emissaries. That's most commonly how it's done. And it's done with order 555, create camp. In the rule book, it states that this, this order is done at easy difficulty. It costs 2000 gold, and only if you're successful. If you try and place a camp and it doesn't happen, you keep the cash. And if you are successful with it, it gives your emissary a really good boost to their skill rank between one and 10 points. Now it's very tempting to name a rank 30 emissary early on. Very few nations start with emissaries better than rank 30, particularly in the standard formats such as 1650 and 2950 and straight away send them out there to place some camps. But I would normally advise against that as an immediate and fast thing that you're wanting to do. It's normally better to name a rank 30 emissary and then let them mature for a couple of terms doing the basic influence your uh, own nation order to improve loyalty in some, um, usually in your capital, and also maybe having their spare order of selling some goods and just doing a bit of admin, and wait until they're nearer rank 40. And the reason I say this is, first of all, while an emissary order is uh, rated, this emissary order is rated as being easy, it won't always happen. And I have seen uh, a rank 30 emissary go out there ready to place some camps and they actually fail to do it for a couple of turns. And that's just wasted time. And because they're in an empty hex, there's not much else they can do other than move. It's just wasting time. But more critical than that is that any camp that you name will have a starting loyalty of half the skill of the emissary who's created it. So if your rank 30 emissary goes out there, places a camp, it will be at rank 15, uh, loyalty 15. And 15 loyalty is that point where there is a chance every turn that the camp will just automatically degrade, which will waste the time and the money you've spent in creating it. If you're at an emissary at rank 40, you'll start at loyalty 20. So you've got a little bit of a buffer with the natural movement of a point up or down of just staying and it will continue to exist. The other thing is, is that camps created by your own emissaries, particularly if they're lower level, if they're coming in at rank 17 or rank 19 or rank 20 with their loyalty, they will be vulnerable to loyalty drops. So make sure you get your tax change in first because that will affect all of your settlements. And you go and play, you don't want to place a new camp. It's got a loyalty of 20. And at the end, stick your tax rate up from 40% to 60%, and your little baby camp then goes to rank 10 loyalty, and all your new little workers pack up and go home, and you've wasted it and destroyed a camp. So it normally takes a couple of turns rearranging your tax rate and getting your emissary named 
you may want to name another emissary. So you, you, you do a name character order to get a rank 30 emissary. And then that rank 30 names another rank 30 emissary. You then have a couple of turns of them upgrading their own skill, get into the high 30s, ideally around 40. And then they go out and then they can start camping. At that point, if a rank 38 or rank 40 uh, emissary goes out, if you get a um, create camp order off, because it gives quite a big increase to your skill rank, you should then be good to just keep going turn after turn. The other way in which you can create camps is with order 552, which is only uh, able to be executed by an army commander. It also costs 4,000 gold, so it's twice the cost, so you're not getting as good a return on it, and you don't get any skill increase. So, But also, just as importantly, a commander with an army has probably got something else to do, like recruit or go off and fight a battle. So army commanders placing camps will only really happen if they're on the way to someone and they've got a spare order and they are command 40 plus or if you've got um, a lot of good things happening and uh, you've got a spare army commander who's rank 40 plus and you're not needing to change uh, to do lots of capital orders with him like um, change tax rate or change uh, your relations with others uh, if you do have the luxury of a spare rank 40 or 50 commander and an army and he's not needed to go off and fight off in wars he can go around planting camps but normally emissaries are the way to do it so you're wanting to plant some camps the next question comes up what location should you choose well there are a number of different factors one is what are you wanting to get out of the production now, production will be affected by climate, so the further north you are, the more likely it is to be cold, moving through to polar, which means there will be uh, debuffs on the production that's happening. So if you're going and placing lots of camps in the far, far north and it's polar, you won't get much production out of it. Uh, but the second thing is, is the terrain type. So think through what sort of goods you want, and then you can place some camps in the terrain type um, that will produce the most for that. So if you're wanting lots of timber, if you're wanting to create war machines or fortifications or ships, go and populate some forest. Obviously, if you're wanting um, to create some gold as a gold mine to get some cash flowing, and uh, you're also wanting steel and um, bronze in order to well equip your troops, you know, go up into the mountains. If you're wanting um, uh, horses and you're wanting leather for them and you're wanting food that um, planes are very good for that marsh no don't even think about it desert probably not unless push comes to shove hills are very good because they kind of give a bit of everything you can get a bit of gold you get a bit of food you get a bit of bit of anything with gold there that you, so you know if you end up placing a lot in the hills particularly if you're in the far south and it's nice and warm um, you can have a well-rounded level of production that's coming through. A second thing to consider with camps are making sure you can bag some nice strategic locations that are going to play an important role later in the game. So um, there are two considerations. One is getting hold of pinch points, so areas where there are mountains around, so thinking about the Gap of Rohan or the back door of Mordor between the mountains and the Sea of Nern. Um, they can be quite important areas where you can have a place there so you can make sure you can control movement going through by placing a fortification or having an army there. Um, second thing with regards to uh, important strategic areas, if you've got an army which is some distance from um, you know where the main front is going to be so maybe you're way down where the Corsairs are or the Easterlings or maybe you're uh, way off say you know Arthur Dane or Noldor or somewhere like that if you can create a few camps which are 12 or 14 movement points from say your capital and main recruitment base you will be able to have those as refueling points if you recruit say a whole load of um, cavalry a big cavalry army way off and it's going to take two or three turns for them to get to the front make sure that where they move to there will be a camp that you've already created 
It's also useful to make sure you have a look at the fog of war and which are the areas that are off your enemy's map in the future. So you can plant camps really quite close to areas where they wouldn't want you to have a population centre and unless they go and scry or check it out with a scout, they will never know. So some areas like Enidwaith or again just beyond the back door of Mordor or um, there are one or two places um, in the areas north of uh, Mordor where there are just little tiny gaps between maps of say the Northmen and the um, Cinder Elves and you can just as Dark Servants pop one or two camps in and you can do that early in the game and invest and make sure you build them up and fortify them and you can just have areas that they're not quite going to be able to get hold of. Um, another thing to consider are mountains and dragons. So it's tempting to go and place um, camps up in the mountains. That's really good if your scenario has dragons in it. Fourth Age doesn't. Um, so you can go and if you're a dark servant, you can keep an eye out for dragons and you'll be able to find where those dragons are if you've got camps in the mountains, which will flag them up. If you're three people, it's tempting, particularly with the Misty Mountains or the Withered Heath. The trouble is, you put a camp up there and a dragon turns up, it'll hang around for a couple of turns and it will decrease the loyalty because if you're the good guys, nothing more demoralizing than having a dragon going around eating your villagers and all the rest. So it's not advisable for putting camps up in the mountains as the free people. Also, if you send an emissary up there, he might bump into a dragon and get eaten. And that's a downer for everyone. The other thing to think about when placing camps are that there are ruins already existing on the map. Some of them already have fortifications there. So it's one way to get yourself some free fortifications by dropping an emissary in and popping a camp down. It's also, I have heard this said, I ought to have looked at the stats to see whether it works or not, I believe it's true. Starting population centres have a little bit of a bonus to the resources that they produce. And a ruin starting at the beginning of the game also counts as a starting pop centre. So if you go to somewhere like Amon Sul um, and put down a camp, it will bag that increased benefits for having a population for its production. The one thing just to be careful, however, is sometimes place going, uh, placing a character into a ruins can trigger an encounter, sometimes with spirits. So uh, a starting emissary going in at rank 40 will only have a challenge rank of 20. They could get killed off. So it might be a good thing to maybe post a camp there with an army commander. That won't trigger uh, an encounter. Or to send a strong character in there first just to... Um, trigger the encounter, get the benefits of the encounter, and then you can send in your weak emissary to get the stuff. Last thing I want to talk about with camping is the camp limit. When I first started playing back in the 90s, the first thing I was told by one of my colleagues was, by the way, there's a limit on the number of camps there can be, get out there and place them, because if you wait, you'll miss out. This is certainly a true thing and a time will come when your emissary, even really high level emissary, will go to place a camp and it will say he failed. There is insufficient population and it doesn't say the line of, but if you try again, you may be successful. It just stops and then you know you've hit the camp limit. You can normally expect the camp limit in a normal game of 1650 to be hit around somewhere between turns 10 and 15 usually around 11 or 12, depending on how aggressively people are going in to hit camps. In uh, a scenario like Fourth Age, you can hit it in turn four or five, really that early. But that's when you have some highly specifically designed emissary nations that are just out to nail camps. And that is something that you need to be aware of if you're going into Fourth Age. If you're not hit nailing camps early on, you're going to be really behind the curve. With the camp limit, obviously any camp you place before the camp limit is denying your enemy the chance to do that. So a strategy is to really aggressively place camps earlier on if you can. What better way of not having to go out and 
kill off your enemy's population centers than by making sure they can't place any. And when you hit the camp limit, a lot of players then think, right, that's camping done. We're now going to move on to the next phase of the game. But actually, there is a if the number of population centers then dips below that limit, you can place new camps. Not a lot of people realize this. And this is where posting with an army commander can be useful. Um, because let's say you know there are going to be some population centers burnt, that's going to reduce the number of pop centers there are in the game. You can then take up the slack by posting more camps. And here, posting camps is better than creating camps, partly because you're more likely to have a spare high-level commander at this point in the game. And secondly, post camp, order number 552, happens before create camp, order number 555. So if you're posting a camp and one of your enemies is trying to create a camp, uh, the post camp order will go off first and you will you will sneak and get that one free slot that's happened from a pop center somewhere having been burnt to the ground. So that's another way in which you can just keep turning the screw on the enemy and smothering them because as pop centers disappear you're the one that takes up the slack and their number of pop centers just slowly dwindles. At least that's the idea. Well, I think that's covered everything I want to say about camping. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do like the video. It's always encouraging to me to see that. Leave a comment below if you like. Maybe dispute some of the things I've said. A lot of this, as I always say, are just my own ideas on the game. I'm not infallible. I'm not the world's most informed, most experienced or best player. So do challenge what I've said in the comments below. And if you've really enjoyed this, do subscribe to the channel and you'll pick up on other videos as I make them. I'm trying to get one out every week or so at the moment, although I am creating a video diary of a game I've just started. But as Middle Earth Play by Mail games can take a year or two to play, I'm only going to put them all out once the game is over. Otherwise, my enemy will have very good intel on what I'm doing. But for now, have a great day and see you next time.